birthday party. This is a virtual celebration for our entire planet. Oh, I am Hannah Hippo, and I'm working with three great organizations who are coming together for the next several years to connect kids across the world, just like you. We will be doing lots of fun projects you can get involved with while we all learn how to protect our planet and save the biodiversity of our entire world. Good morning. I'm Dino Martins. I'm the Executive Director of the Impala Research Center. Impala is an institution that is dedicated to science, education and conservation. We are managed by four different trustees. These are the Kenya Wildlife Service and National Museums of Kenya, as well as the Smithsonian Institution and Princeton University, who together with the Impala Wildlife Foundation provide the stewardship and protection for this amazing land, its wildlife and its natural resources. Impala is here for the world and for Kenya and for students and scientists to enjoy and explore and discover. Behind me, as you can see in the Iwaso Nyiro River, are a family of hippos. Hippos are one of the amazing species that live at Impala. There are dozens of different species of mammals, hundreds of different species of birds, and many, many thousands of species of plants and insects that make up this dynamic and incredible ecosystem. Today we are going to be talking to you and sharing a little bit of the amazing wonder and stories around the science and nature and conservation through a very special character that we've created called Hannah. For many years, Impala has been the center of science and education, and we've realized that one of the best ways to communicate science <laughs> is through storytelling, I think the hippos agree, and sharing the, the amazing intricate lives of animals and other creatures in this landscape in ways that can actually connect with people, especially with young people. We've created Hannah and her friends to be able to tell you a little bit about this ecosystem. Today is Earth Day and Hannah has a very special message for you on Earth Day that we are all part of the Earth and we all share in its wonder, its our responsibility for it and in its future. So we're very really, very much looking forward to sharing with you Hannah's stories and adventures from here at Impala. Thank you. Hi everybody, Heather Lowenstein, Artistic Director of Stone Lion Puppet Theater right here in the US of A in Kansas City, Missouri. And we are so excited to be part of this project with Mimpala Research Center in Kenya and Project Central in Kansas City, Kansas. We have amazing art projects and puppet fun planned to help make everyone understand a little bit more about why we need to protect our planet. Stay tuned for the next couple of years with Hannah the Hippo and tons of puppet fun. Hi everyone, I'm Sherry Wilson. I'm a teaching ecologist in Kansas City, Kansas, right in the middle of the United States. A teaching ecologist is someone who works with students, teachers, and communities to learn about ecology and sustainability. I'm so excited that you're all joining us for our Earth Day party. Uh, we're going to meet Hannah and some other new friends do some activities and learn about biodiversity and other environmental issues. So let's get started. So our word of the day is biodiversity. Can you say that word? Biodiversity. What's that? Biodiversity refers to the variety of living species on earth, including plants, animals, bacteria, and fungi. I'm a fungi. While Earth's biodiversity is so rich that many species have yet to be discovered, many species are being threatened with extinction due to human activities, putting the Earth's magnificent biodiversity at risk. Here is a fun game you can play to learn more about biodiversity in the food web. Here is Sherry and Girl Scout Troop 925 in Kansas City to explain the game. Hi everyone, I'm Sherry Wilson. I'm a teaching ecologist here in Kansas City. And it's great to be with you today. We're going to play a food web game. Here's a picture of one that 
has animals that we find in Kenya. So you can see we're looking at basically who eats what or who eats who. So what we're going to do today is we're going to make our own food web. And so what I have here are some cards and everybody's going to get a card and we're going to take this yarn and this is going to be our web. If you're water, then you're gonna hold on to the yarn and you're gonna pass the yarn to the person who has the star grass because the star grass needs water to grow, right? That person is going to hang on to the yarn and then pass it to the person who has the common hippopotamus because the common hippopotamus eats grass. And we're just going to keep doing this around the circle until all of our plants and animals are part of the web. And then we'll just step back for a minute and kind of take a look at what we've done and, and we'll see how everything is interconnected. So it's not just about one animal or one plant. We need all of these animals and plants for our ecosystem to thrive and to be healthy. Then what we'll do is I'll come by with a pair of scissors and we'll start cutting the connections. That will help us understand better what happens. What happens if we don't have any water? Well, if we don't have water, we can't have grass. If there's no grass, the hippopotamus doesn't have anything to eat. And we can see how, again, everything is interconnected. And if you take one thing away, then everything else may go away also. So that's our game. Uh, when we're finished, we'll do a little uh, debrief and talk about what we learned. Check out stonelionpuppets.org and click on the Hannah Hippo Project to download your own food web cards to play. You can also find other fun puppet making activities and updates on our project, including when and where you can see my new puppet show. What do you think is the biggest threat to our planet? I think the biggest threat to our planet is global warming because all the gases we put off into the planet's atmosphere can hurt birds, kill animals, and it can heat up the earth to cause global warming. Why should we protect the wild things and places? Um, we should protect the wild things and places because if we don't, animals can go extinct and plants can die, and um, some plants we need to live, and some like, it's like if humans went extinct, th that's how the animals would feel, if they went extinct.
impressive. Eyes sharp, keen and perceptive. How beautiful are you? Yes, so beautiful. Elephants so huge in size with a large stomach. High intelligence, yes, big IQ. Heavy carrier of loads, yes, carriers. Handsome animal with a long proboscis. How beautiful are you? Yes, so beautiful. Biggest mambo grazer browser, what a feeling frenzy. Biting, munching on leaves, fruits, branches, bats and grass. Something strange? 
Now I was interested because I am a very curious hippo. Yes, come on, come on, I want to show you. Yeah, yeah, come on, come on, let me show you. Oh, he flew down to the edge of the river. I followed as fast as I could. The river flowed steady and silent. The water shimmered in the sunlight. Dragonflies danced and chased each other to and fro. I don't see anything strange. Look down there. It just looks like a lump of mud. No, 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 look and listen. I heard it crying earlier. I looked down at the lump of mud. It did look a bit strange. And yes, it moved a little too. Then I thought I heard a little voice crying out. Help me, I'm stuck in the mud. Hello, little one. And I pushed my nose into the mud and I lifted up the talking lump. Freed from the mud, we peered closely at the little creature. It had a pointy beak, feathers, and large, bright, orange, gangly feet. It's a little chick. Oh, you poor little thing. How long have you been stuck in the mud? I was swept away during the rain. Oh. Now I'm lost, and I don't know how to get back to my nest. The little chick looked so helpless, cold, wet, and tired. It was shivering. I could see that this little bird needed help finding its way back to its parents and nest. I love helping others. Don't you? It makes me feel warm and good and happy. Don't worry. We're going to help you. We need to find out where your nest and parents are. I can't remember where my parents and nest were along the river. I'm lost. We have to figure out how we can help. There are all kinds of birds that live along the river. So surely the chick must belong to one of those families. Let's ask the Egyptian geese. So we did. No luck. How about the blacksmith plovers? So we did. Not their chick either. But they said to ask the vulturine guinea fowls. Uh, I'm sorry to trouble you, uh, but we were wondering whether you were missing any of your chicks. Well, young lady, why would you ask such a question? Why are you interrupting our water drinking? We are on a tight schedule, you know. What, what, now speak up. Hannah and I are trying to help a lost chick find his way home. Lost chick, you say? Yes, we've asked the Egyptian geese and the blacksmith plovers who recommended we speak to you. Hmm, sounds a bit fishy if you ask me. We are trying to help the lost chick, please. Hmm, not one of ours, not one of ours. Look at those feet. Nothing like a guinea fowl's. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that is not one of our chicks. Oh, no. Now what? You are brave and kind. Let me see if I can help you ask more creatures if they know where this lost chick belongs. Look, it's flying up into a tall acacia tree and calling at the top of its voice. Well, guinea fowl are very, very loud, mm -hmm. so he'll be heard all along the river. Now we wait. And watch. And wait some more. I think I'm just going to take 
a nice cool nap in the water. Why, hello, little dragonfly. Good afternoon, Hannah. I'm here to help you get the lost chick home. <gasps> I heard Chief Guinea Fowl shouting his message earlier as I was flying by. Every day I travel up and down this river. I see many things. I hear many things. I learn many things. I know where the little lost chick's <gasps> nest is. There was some heavy rain last night and the river flooded. In a hidden bend in the river, there was a very special nest woven by two rare, beautiful birds. This nest floated at the water's edge. It was woven into a tangled bank with a special secret entrance that was hidden in the water. This nest belonged to two very special birds called Mr. and Mrs. Finfoot. As the water rose, the nest flooded and the little chick was swept away. The baby Finfoot's parents had been searching for him. Oh, Ollie and I were so excited. Lead on, Dragonfly. I put that little Finfoot chick on my head and with Ollie the Oxpecker on my back, we swam down the river. Oh, we swam and we swam and we swam. Oh, oh we passed the, the blacksmith's plovers and the Egyptian geese. We passed the vulture and guinea fowl and so many more amazing birds and bugs and animals, including all the sleeping hippos. We are almost there. I was so very tired. And the current was very strong for a little hippo like me. Mm. Look there, by the bend in the river where the trees arch over the water and the tangled bank is covered in creepers and flowers all woven together. Finfoots, Finfoots, don't be shy. Don't hide away. Hannah the hippo is here to play. She's brought you a gift for you to see. So come out now and dance with glee. The shy Finfoots peeped cautiously out from their tangled bank and cried with joy. Our, Our lost chick is back safely. Thank you, thank you, red drop wing dragonfly. Thank you, thank you, Ollie Oxpecker. Thank you, thank you, Hannah the Hippo. I didn't feel very tired anymore. My little heart was filled with joy. It felt so good to help someone. Now it was time to go home to my family. All along the banks of the Owasso Narrow River, all the different creatures echoed the call. Hannah Hippo is a hero. Hannah Hippo is a hero. <laughs> the end. I hope you like my story today. To read the entire book, go to www.mimpala.org and search for Hannah Hippo. Or go to Stone Lion's website at www.stonelionpuppets.org and click on Hannah the Hippo Project to download your very own copy. You can also have lots of fun coloring the different bird and butterfly pictures in the book and even pictures of me. Remember this Earth Day. Every living creature, both plants and animals, play an important part in our world. Each one will be missed if they disappear and will affect so many others, even you humans. Protect what you can and make every day Earth Day.